Salwete, O Redentes. My name is Draco, and this is Antigua Colina, the show where I recreate ancient recipes and discuss their ingredients and history. As usual, sources are in the description. But first, a libatum to Vesta. Today we have a sauce recipe, crushed in the mortar of our modern age until to our liking. In polo elixo jus crudum, or a raw sauce for cooked chicken. Raw, in this context, means that the sauce hasn't been cooked before serving. Think more like a vinaigrette than a hollandaise. Additionally, elixo means boiled, but surely we have more appetizing ways to cook chicken than boiling it like some unwashed kelt. Filthy savages. To that end, I'll be cooking the chicken in my preferred method, roasting. However, since the recipe calls for the boiled chicken, that implies that the sauce is the focus, not the chicken. Here is the recipe as it appears in the Deire Coconaria, with translation provided. As usual, I provide my personal translation compared to the Veilang translation seen on the Penelope U Chicago website. Some notes. We will substitute dates here before the Karyotam, but to this, I'll also add some current cordial I have on hand. While the word anethi can refer to either dill or anise seeds, I will use a combination of both. Due to ecological scarcity, we cannot use lacer, but if you have dried fennel or saffron, I would recommend that instead. For this recipe, besides for the chicken, which you will cook to your own liking, you will need 1 4th teaspoon dried dill, 1 4th teaspoon anise seeds, 1 half teaspoon dried mint leaves, 1 half teaspoon mustard seeds, a few threads of saffron, 1 4th cup vinegar of your choice, 2 tablespoons date syrup, 1 tablespoon fruit liqueur, 1 tablespoon pseudogarum, and 1 tablespoon olive oil. To begin, toast the dill, anise, mint, and mustard in a pan. Cook them while stirring occasionally until the spices until the spices become aromatic and bring back all those lovely childhood memories of going to the country fair or the circus, the public execution. No wait, that's the wrong century. Anyways, once your spices are toasted, remove them from the heat. Then, to a mortar and pestle, add your saffron, pseudogarm, vinegar, and olive oil, and GRIND! Add the spices and then GRIND SOME MORE! Then add your date syrup and fruit liquor. Mix until perfectly combined. You can immediately serve it over your chicken, but like all sauces, I recommend letting it settle and the flavors develop. If it needs more salt, do so before serving. While you enjoy this bee footage of me cooking my chicken, let us discuss our plucky friends. To many peasant, chickens may serve more use alive than dead as a supplier of eggs. When in the city, you might find them sacrificed to Mars as a sacred and favored animal. Perhaps the most famous story of chickens from antiquity comes to us from Polybius, Valerius Maximus, Livy, and others, although in often extremely fragmentary forms. The year 249 BCE, place Drapana, off the coast of western Sicily, the first major naval conflict between Rome and Carthage in the First Punic War. Since Rome has just barely invented a navy with some <coughs> dubious reports saying they reverse engineered it from Punic shipwrecks, although I can't really buy that, they bought two oracular chickens onto the boats. When the chickens, frightened by the sea, refused to prophesize victory through eating some sacred seeds, commander, the consul Pulpius Claudius Pulcher, and with a name like that you know he comes from old money, threw them overboard, famously declaring, then let them drink, since they did not eat. The result? Decisive Carthaginian victory. Enough of oracular chickens. As you might expect, Chickens in general were, in terms of livestock, not terribly expensive, but still rather pricey. Luckily, we have a guide from 301 CE, Diocletian's Price Edicts, which tell us of the price of chickens compared to other goods. Now, it's a whole debate whether the 301 Price Edict actually reflects market prices, if it was meant as an economic reform or moral reform, or if the people actually followed it. Nevertheless, it is Data. A note before we begin. By this point, economic stagnation during the 3rd century crisis has caused severe price inflation across the empire, with the extent still a matter of fierce debate. According to the price edict, a pair of chickens are worth 60 denarii, so 30 denarii per chicken. Comparably, a Roman pound roughly 327.5 grams of black peppercorns costs 800 denarii. To put that in perspective, 327.5 grams of peppercorns is roughly 3.41 cups, or 807 milliliters of peppercorns. Since half a teaspoon of ground 
ground black pepper, definitely enough to flavor a single dish, which we know was affordable throughout the imperial period, weighs 1.4 grams. The average cost of flavoring one meal with pepper is about 3.4 denarii, just over a tenth of the cost of a chicken. To put that into perspective, 3 to 4 denarii can also buy you a mug of beer a large sausage, a two-pronged fork of cheap material, or a high-quality sewing needle. Diocletian also prices a half metric liter of olive oil at the same general price of a chicken, roughly 30 denarii. In other words, if credible, chickens seem to be relatively cheap. Now that our chicken is ready, pour that warm or room temperature sauce over your hot chicken like you're protecting the walls of your city from a barbarian horde. Time for a taste. Call me unimpressed. I've never been the biggest fan of chicken breasts, but this sauce does not help in any way. It's just not my thing. The spices don't quite come out in the right way, but they definitely do make it taste better. Something else worth mentioning is do not use vinegar on your stone mortar and pestles, as it can damage them as seen in this picture here. Besides for that, this is an alright recipe. Maybe I give it a 4 out of 10, but in conclusion, still more footage. I might want to invest in a better microphone. To the Cone Fellowship who provide me the, with the funds to make these videos, many thanks.